Hi, good afternoon. How are we doing? Yeah, I know, I know it's been a busy and back-to-back -back session for everybody and you are hungry. So, I think we finished the panel discussion just outside the room while we were waiting for the panel to happen. Uh, but, I think today we are discussing the role of TV, uh, right? And obviously, all the noise for last uh, five, seven, eight years has been around digital. And it is interesting that we've come back and we're discussing TV today. And on the panel, there are very many experts who spent their lifetime building D2C brands through digital. So it's going to be an interesting conversation, definitely. Uh, today, we'll try and discuss the role of TV overall, why TV is still important. We'll look at how TV works in conjunction with other medium, right? Because part of a funnel and, and not a standalone itself. Uh, we'll see if we can discuss a bit about connected TV. And, and I think that that's the most that we'll be able to do maybe role of IPL, et cetera. So that's really the agenda. We'll see how much we can, we can kind of cover. Uh, so the first question really I want to ask the panel is that, you know, uh, despite the fact that this is so big, you know, 900 million people on YouTube, 250 million doing UPI, half of that doing e-commerce and so on and so forth. The digital number in India is fantastic. But so is TV data, right? Uh, almost about 180 billion of, of spends on television, right? And personally, I think at Leo Burnett, we've had the joy of building large brands such as Amazon, Spotify, PhonePay, all through TV work, right? So digital native brands being built on TV in India. So I want to ask uh, the panel the first question, which is what about TV still makes it, you know, the best ROI, the most uh, popular medium for building narrative, for most popular medium for building even D2C brands in a country like India? So, Samit, we'll start with you and, and your views on, on why do you think TV still works and what about it still works? I think this works. Yeah. So, I think uh, television is still, the, is still the key media to get trust and impact for a brand. What I mean by trust is uh, it's, it's just human conditioning. When, when you see an ad for a brand on television, you start thinking this brand has enough money, must have enough consumers, it's big enough for me to trust it. And that's where the trust comes from. And impact is all about reaching a large audience at the same time. I mean, don't get me wrong. I come from a background of D2C and digital marketing. There is a possibility of reaching a large audience on digital as well, but not as quickly and as efficiently as you can do on television. Yeah, we can trust efficiency and, and speed as well, uh, right? Rajan, uh, coming to you, right? I mean, you, you sell cars under a very trusted name, Tata, right? How, how do you use, use TV and what is the role for TV you feel, in, especially in today's times? I think one of the things that we often forget that TV is a very social medium in the sense that the whole family watches and we are in a category where the families take decisions. It's all, not always individuals, right? So the whole family, if, in my previous experiences in jewelry, in Tanishq as well, again, jewelry buying is a family experience, right? So the, the fact that uh, this is that only medium. I still feel it's the only medium. Digital is not a social medium in that sense. Uh, for brands like us, which are high value purchase brands, it's a considered decision. It's a family decision. The kids are influencing, the grandmother's influencing it. The TV makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, adding further to what somebody just said, uh, the fact that it's got the, the most widespread of uh, penetration in that sense. And I think that uh, it allows us to tell stories. The larger screen allows us to tell stories in a family setting in a much in a much more inclusive way than digital does. And that certainly helps uh, brands like us, uh, certainly with the Tata name, which is very well penetrated across households. And for high value categories like us, I think it's an absolute must that we are on television as one of the uh, platforms. Yeah. Amazing. So you're saying what works for mobile, which is individual consumption, right? Uh, TV stands as a medium for completely opposite, which is social and together and narrative building. Uh, right. Girish, coming to you, right, how, how in your line of uh, work have you used TV uh, and, and is it any different from what Sambit and Rajan have spoken about as a role of TV, especially in today's times? So, so for sure, uh, if you really analyze the various media available today, uh, television by far is perhaps the most powerful and effectively building equity and awareness. Uh, the most efficient way to reach it, as you know, the panelists said. Uh, digital may not help you get there eff effectively, 
Uh, to my mind, of course, as a brand, Blue Star has been built on television over the last two decades or so. Uh, we were not advertising, and you'd be surprised that the first one decade we were just in the B2B business. We weren't even the, in the consumer business. But we still kept investing on television because, as I mentioned earlier, that you know, uh, brand equity cannot be built in private. It has to be, you know, uh, you know, reaching out to as many consumers as you can, even if you're a B2B brand. Uh, of course, efficiencies will come into play. Uh, but having said that, uh, the audiovisual experience that television gives you. You know, without you having that option of skipping the ads and you know other things, etc., there's nothing to beat television. You know, digital. I mean, print, outdoor, radio will be reminder mediums in a way. They are more uh, when you've already built your awareness and you want to convert that into uh, conversions or into sales. Uh, then it helps a lot. But having said that, uh, there is nothing as powerful to my mind to build uh, your brand other than television, even till today. Gaurav, you have a stake in the game, right? Yes. You're part of a TV network. So how, how do you see, uh, what is the role, uh, why is TV still holding on, and what's the unique proposition TV brings that nobody else does? So uh, thank you very much uh, to have us here on the panel. So firstly, is this working? Okay, firstly, uh, see what TV does is, uh, you know, very beautifully, it helps you address uh, key behavior points. So if you want to, impact behavior of any particular market, you will see that TV actually works beautifully. And an example that I can talk about is what happened during COVID. Uh, you know, a lot of people wanted to have access to best medical care, you know, daily news updates of what, what are the policies of travel and other guidelines. In fact, Prime Minister Modi came on television uh, more than 12 times in that year. You know, almost every month there was an event that he was coming and addressing the country through the medium of TV. So clearly, it shows that TV has a far bigger impact. You trust uh, the TV world very easily. Uh, there's a lot of credibility that comes with it. And more importantly, TV, even today, is the highest reached medium in India. 70% of India is connected through television in one way or the other. So, you know, that kind of reach is, cannot be ignored by a marketeer, you know. And even after that, there is a headroom. You know, there could be one part of the market that may never get TV connected, right? They may not be able to afford a TV or whichever way you look at the software. But you can still take TV up to another 80, 82 percent. That's a large part of a, you know, 1.4 billion market. TV today has what, close to uh, 890 or 900 million connections in India? It's a large canvas. So looking at the might of TV, looking at the credibility and the trust that it awards, and I think my key aspect is that it helps change behaviors. So when you want people to become more healthy, you do something with TV. You want people to become, uh, you know, wiser on investments. Again, TV comes in the center of that. So we'll talk about it. But yeah, TV has been that uh, strong medium of influence and impact. Behavior change and scale, Gaurav, that's what talking about. Uh, we want to uh, get a little bit more nuanced on this conversation, right? Because it's obviously not either or, it's not one size fits all. Uh, we'll discuss a bit on how does TV work in relation to other mediums, right? So for example, if you're a young startup, right? Uh, you can, uh, you know, do all the initial numbers through performance and you don't really need to uh, get on TV. And we've had experience on brands which have done very well on performance early. And then as you continue to performance marketing, it becomes very expensive, right? And then you bring TV cover, you bring an air cover and you realize that performance becomes, uh, you know, uh, more affordable and easier and so on and so forth. So that's one aspect of looking at TV uh, as a part of the funnel of uh, bottom funnel as well. The other is increasingly we're seeing, for example, Coinbase at Super Bowl, right? It just played a QR code for 15 seconds. So TV, in, even in terms of content, uh, is, is interacting with other medium, right? The TV ad is connected to a QR code, is connected to Twitter. So how are we seeing and how, or how should we see TV uh, as a part of other mediums and other format? Samit, your thoughts on that, especially from the Honasa experience? Yeah, I think we can do a panel discussion just on this one question. There are so many angles to it. I mean, to start from uh, the way I remember when I started off my career with, uh, I was working for Nestle and we just launched Nestle Ice Tea. Uh, one of the first things to do on awareness was put it on television in summers. That's it. Put it on television, mask cover, everyone gets to know about it. The other way is how a lot of new age startups deal with the same problem. When you start off a company, what do you do in the beginning? You can't afford to put it on television. 
So you start going for the smallest niche, which you can find maybe on digital. You can go more targeted. If once you go a little bigger and you still want to tell a story, like these guys were saying, a larger audiovisual format tells a story much better. So they go to connected television or they go to HDTV. And they just go, I mean, they just go bigger and bigger from a very small niche and digital allows them to go niche. But finally, when they have to go mass impact trust, it has to end up at television. So I think that's the way to look at it. Both have their own roles and in a media plan, I mean, you use it as per the stage of your business. The second aspect of it is also how, um, and I think, I mean, BBH would be a great uh, uh, story to tell of how stories are being told in the different mediums and how both mediums are learning from each other. Suddenly television is attributable. There are questions being asked. I mean, the biggest success of digital used to be that it's attributable. Now television, there are companies like Policy Bazaar, even at Mama Earth, we used to do it, where television spots on a particular time spot you get to know after a week, and you try to map it with how much traffic, how many installs on the app you got, and you try to do a correlation, and you figure out attribution. On the other hand, the television media has, inform, has a kind of influenced digital as well. The audiovisual content on digital is not just 15 second performance ads, it's also storytelling, it's also content pieces, it's long format, two minute brand stories, etc. I mean, one of the best creative for me from Mama days was when we told our purpose, which was a two and a half minute video, which was pretty much what television used to be during the Doordarshan days. So there's so much that's happening in relation, both in media mix planning and also in kind of creatives learning from each other. Very interesting, Samir. You're, you're saying that the television as a medium is also changing. It's not just about long-term brand building. It is also about attribution and immediate uh, kind of impact. Rajan, uh, how would you react to that? I mean, you're also in a category where I'm told that 60 to 70% journey is getting completed online. So how are you seeing online and other medium and television in conjunction? I think the TV pieces is definitely important for us. There's no getting away from it, especially when uh, it's such a high revenue, high unit, uh, uh, you know, value uh, category. So especially when you're launching new brands, it's definitely uh, very, very relevant. That's our baseline. Uh, in fact, we've used IPL very, very successfully. Since 2018, we've been uh, partners with them. And on the digital side, we largely use it from a performance marketing perspective, from a reminder perspective, post the bigger campaign, or to, or to even form relationships where we can do uh, activities that possibly create interest and drive consumers to the uh, to our stores. I mean, fundamentally, that's the primary aim of all our, or, I mean, anybody on this panel is out there marketing campaigns to get people to uh, to come to the uh, to come to the stores. And and for us, that's the most uh, the integration of both is extremely important. I think television uh, with the with the advent of high impact properties, whether it's IPL, whether it's Big Boss, whether it's even the Shark Tank. I mean, the biggest irony is that if you watch the American Shark Tank, even the brands who don't get funding sell out because they were on television. I mean, that's the that's the, pu the beauty and power of television. And I think television has increasingly found properties which are unique to them, which are sustainable only on them. I thought, for example, that Coffee with Karan, which was done this time on Hotstar only, it was such a damn squib because as a family, we used to enjoy it together, irrespective of the quality. We won't discuss the quality of the program. But it just it just took the mojo out of the whole whole thing, right? So the integration for any brand today in a very cost costly market, we have to choose our audiences very carefully, and therefore uh, the programs that we uh, uh, tie up with. And also, it also depends on the product life cycle of the brand. Where are you in the product life cycle uh, of the brand? Uh, certainly, for startups, it would be unviable to go on television, but if they were to go on television, that's your instant 15 seconds of fame, right? And then what happens next is anybody's guess, depending on how well you're geared up to handle it and what kind of quality of product uh, uh, you have. So I think both, there's no getting away from, uh, from either of the two. Uh, television, because of its reach and penetration, is still going to be a very, very relevant medium, uh, but we have to use the integration with digital and social media very, very wisely. And you're saying digital is more a follow-up and a more a closing uh, mechanism for you. Uh, yeah, Grish, how have you, I mean, you, you said that you've used television for long-term brand building, right? 
uh, how do you use television in conjunction with other medium? How do you see it interact with other medium? Is it changing itself? Uh, how do you see it as a part of the mix? I think, uh, I think for, a, uh, you know, for sure, television is learning from the other mediums as well. Uh, from, a, from a perspective of, you know, what other mediums like, say, digital. And digital has really grown a lot on influencer marketing and, you know, television branded content is becoming more and more popular going forward. So obviously advertisers are concerned that if consumers don't see their TV commercials, how do you still integrate your brand with content on television? So I think that's what television is learning from other mediums that if you really want to get, you know, get to a, uh, you know, to a TG without uh, them going through a TV commercial, then this is the way to do it. Again, having said that, television has a, uh, you know, very important uh, objective. Uh, like I equated to mass bombarding, whereas digital is more surgical strikes or micro-surgical strikes. So that's a big difference between the two. It all depends on your objective. If you want to do mass bombarding, build your brand, television, there's nothing to beat it like I mentioned earlier, but digital will just help you reach to a particular target group far more efficiently. You know, so obviously both are learning from each other as I see it. Uh, like, you know, the panelists rightly mentioned that you now, you know, run an ad on IPL uh, during television and then you see how many searches happened on that particular brand that evening and obviously digital and television, uh, you know, are kind of uh, collaborating with each other in terms of data exchange uh, to get an idea for a marketer. And, you know, most media planners actually give a combo of A plus B and then see the you know, effectiveness is far higher. So from that perspective, I think, uh, you know, uh, both will, like he, you know, rightly mentioned, will coexist and both will have a role to play. And uh, it's exciting ways, uh, days ahead for marketers yeah. like us. Mass, mass bombarding versus surgical strike. Interesting, interesting framing. Uh, Gaurav, uh, what's your view on this? Because also there are a lot of media houses now who are doing the whole package, right? They're saying, we can give you TV, we can give you digital, we can give you all of it together. How are you seeing TV interact with other medium and how are you seeing it as part of the mix? So what happens is TV becomes, uh, in, in many of the uh, newer, um, you know, marketing plans, TV is becoming a central part where they use it to create content. And then they use different formats to distribute the content, including TV, digital and other measures. So creation of content is still pretty much the domain of TV. Uh, they have, the stories are well told, uh, uh, like people were talking about it earlier. Storytelling is something which is becoming very important for brands today. And somehow TV managed to convey that story in a credible and a very, very effective way. Uh, it's not really a choice between TV or digital, both will coexist. Uh, like we talked earlier, uh, there'll be certain, uh, you know, digital will bring certain sharp shooting to the warfare and television will bring a certain grandeur and impact that, you know, they'll demolish the whole building, for example. And, you know, that's the message that goes back to the enemy camp. So, you know, that kind of mass bombing is what TV will do. And digital will do that sharpshooting. So both are important. It's not neither, you know, one or the other. But largely, marketers have today figured out that, you know, uh, to create a need, to impact a behavior, to create a, uh, uh, you know, very large sustainable change, they're using TV. Then to fulfill that change and need, a lot of them are using digital where they can get the transaction part of it. For example, you look at, say, a policy bazaar, right? They are one of the largest advertisers on TV, right? They create the need for you to go and, you know, pick up a policy online or at least that need is planted in your mind that you are un under insured or you need to really address that. Then the fulfillment will happen at another platform. So they use best of both. And there are many brands, you know, if you look at uh, the top 10 brands on TV in the last two years, I think five of them will be from the e-commerce or the new commerce uh, side. So it clearly shows that that's where they will see, they want to build a brand quickly. They want to reach 70% of India quickly, right? Because their next round of investment is dependent on that. So they use TV for its benefit. And from the TV side, we also use digital to further our cause. We want to bring out faster stories. Today, stories break on digital. I mean, it's a fact, right? So we use that to harness our uh, content. In fact, we do something very interesting at times. I think it's almost like a Coke formula. Uh, many people have tried, they have not been able to replicate it. We throw out, uh, you know, a dozen stories in the morning. Say around 10, 11, we throw 10, 12 stories out on various uh, social platforms. And we see what is it that India is tracking. So, you know, during the lunch time, during the time that you're traveling to office, back home, you may have liked something, you may have commented on something. And suddenly, by the evening, 6 o'clock, we know three stories that have outperformed the other seven or eight stories. Those three stories become the central part of our debate in the evening. 
it's like almost a daily poll that we do. We throw 10 stories, we see which, is, which are the stories that people want to talk about, and then they become part of our content piece. So we are actually harnessing the power of digital to further improve the TV content. It's far more connected as an ecosystem than yes. this or that. Uh, there can't be a conversation on TV uh, without IPL, right? So, uh, I mean, there's TV and there's IPL. I mean, IPL is an event by itself. The, the fundas are different. The, the way to succeed on IPL is different. I mean, we've personally taken many brands on IPL. And I mean, we, in fact, we just did I, Spotify and IPL last year. And when we came out of IPL, we've had a huge hockey stick uh, growth, right? So, it is expensive. I mean... Uh, it's, it's, it's not easy to, to be on IPL, but when you are on IPL and you've cracked the formula correct, there's huge amount of success uh, that comes to us. I want to understand and I want to ask and discuss, uh, is A, is IPL kind of event re-energizing TV, A, and B, are the rules of the game on something like IPL different? Because it is 20 seconds, it's fast, uh, you know, uh, it's very high investment uh, as well. Uh, your thoughts, Ambit, on this? Yeah, I've never been part of a brand that has been able to afford IPL. So, uh, all my uh, viewpoints will be more theoretical in nature. No, I mean, in all honesty, uh, IPL or any other impact property, let's say Big Boss, or any other impact property, Dance India Dance, all of these give, one of the first things I mentioned about what TV has as an advantage versus digital is impact in reach happening all very quickly. That's what IPL, Big Boss, any of these impact properties give. If I have to reach 100 million people on digital, it's not like I can't. It's just that it's going to take me a long time to do so. And it's, especially if I want to do it efficiently for my, for my campaign to build up, it's going to take at least a month. It's going to take some time, right? Whereas if I put money on IPL, I'm able to reach out to that 100 million very quickly within the first spot or so. That's the big advantage. But on top of that comes the question of what frequency do you put your ad spots on? Just putting one, I don't know. I mean, others on the panel who've used IPL can probably mention, but at least from my experience with Big Boss and other impact properties, putting one on one episode makes no difference. It has to be there throughout so that there is top of mind and salience. Uh, and also additionally, on top of the spots, if you can do some kind of, some kind of integrations or additional kind of banners or something like that, it just makes things much more memorable because objective at the end of the day is to get top of mind and salience, not just have a spot out there. Rajan, where are you on this? I mean, do you believe that if you have to do TV, might as well do IPL or do you believe it's a complete waste of money? As someone who can afford IPL, uh, the question is I think wrongly targeted it's because I'm already in the game, right? We've been investing in IPL since 2018 as partners, not just as advertisers. And uh, invariably, IPL has always happened at a time which has been two or three months after the launch of one of our biggest vehicles. So it was Altros, it was Nexon, it was Harrier, it was Safari, it was Punch. It's invariably happened a couple of months after that and we have seen some tremendous boost uh, arising out of that. Because the whole package, you have the car placement on the, on the grounds, you have the mentions in the commentator's uh, speech and, and, and so on and so forth. But having said that, I think that every brand needs to think very, very carefully about that kind of investment. It is a massive investment. And it's a one-time huge investment which can blow you out of the water. And as a marketeer, your ass is, sorry, you're on the line. So, uh, <laughs> so I think it's a, it's a very, very considered uh, call. It's as big as, uh, not as big, but equivalent in my mind when we are searching for answers and somebody says brand ambassador. <laughs> So if, if you're a band looking to make a big impact and you've got something new to offer and you can afford it, it certainly makes sense uh, because you will get that mileage. But if it's sustenance or if it's a routine product like coffee, tea, maybe, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah. It depends on what you want out of the, out of the game. Girish, where are you on, on the IPL piece? I mean, so I was a part of an IPL panel earlier, so at the cost of not sounding repetitive, We've been on, you know, Blue Star's been on IPLs ever since its first season. I've been on every season of IPL barring just a year or two. Otherwise, the last 14 seasons we've been there. We're not a big brand in terms of deep pockets. We have very limited money available, but we choose to use it wisely. 
Uh, of course, IPL uh, has a great timing advantage for us because it's the start of the summer season. Most of our campaigns are launched on IPL. But what we've learned from IPL is very different from other television advertising. Uh, one thing for IPL is that you have to uh, acknowledge the fact that your break TVRs would be the lowest, which means people would want to obviously wait for the next over. So they are not really going in anywhere, right? So that advantage of engagement is there with IPL. B, a lower ACDs work much better. So a 10 or 15 seconds, because again, you can't splurge 30 seconds on an IPL. A 10, 15 seconder, you got to really do some kick-ass advertising, uh, clutter-breaking advertising to stand apart. If you can manage that, that you can really be successful on IPL with even lower budgets. Okay. So these are the advantages that, uh, you know, and of course, in terms of a property, a lot of people and research tells us that if a brand is on IPL, they suddenly, you know, put it as a very respectable brand, right? It's like one of those brands that they would look up to it in terms of aspiration, in terms of premiumness, it just goes up if you're on IPL. So these are the, you know, other advantages that one has of a large property like IPL. And uh, therefore, I think we've never looked back. Uh, but having said that, yes, it is a huge investment. I'd agree it would be a large chunk of our monies as well. But if we, you know, do it wisely, our frequency is higher. Uh, you create different edits of the same ACD. Uh, you know, communicate your message over four, ten seconders, you know, better than what you would do in one thirty seconder. You might really be able to stand out even despite the clutter. Gaurav, uh, being a TV guy, I mean, if I was to polarize a question for you that if you want to do TV, do just do impact and don't do anything else, how would you react to that? Actually, that's not a bad idea. In fact, there are many brands who have uh, built themselves up, uh, like Girish mentioned, Blue Star, uh, you know, in the same category as a brand like Kentaro. You will not see them on anything except news and cricket. You know, even Girish to that extent is largely ex exploiting the you know, benefits out of sports and cricket. And they're spending maybe 70%, 80% of their investments in that. And there they buy the highest quality product. They'll buy IPL, they'll buy the 9 o'clock prime time debate because they want that impact. And uh, brands are very happy doing it. So it works for brands. In fact, we believe that, you know, IPL is what? IPL is a high intensity activity condensed in a small form. I'm making it look like a scientific formula, but that's what it is. Like a lot of action done in 60 days. We have to create our own IPLs, for example, in news. For You have elections, uh, you have budget. Those are one-day events like IPL where, you know, uh, several people come onto a particular platform or a channel, watch content and go back. So those are our own high points that we create where brands, you know, brands like Tata, brands like Blue Star, they come on board and they want to talk to their audience for that day. So it, it works. Sometimes less is more. So just focus and get out. I want to shift gears a bit and look into the future a bit, right? And talk about connected TVs, right? So huge growth, uh, right? Because smart TVs are going to happen in a big way. Internet is going to happen in a big way. It's already happening in a big way. Charles, I mean, connected TVs grew 74% in the last quarter 2022, right? And the, the nature of that medium is changing. So YouTube just launched YouTube Shorts, uh, taking their vertical uh, mobile first medium to a connected TV experience. Uh, globally, you know their experiences that you're watching something and you could buy, uh, you know, you could take a product and, and social commerce and entertainment commerce, you could buy the moment you're watching the piece of content. So those are some bits of changes which are already on the anvil in the more developed markets. And as India leapfrogs to smart TVs, connected TVs, is that going to change the nature of television completely? Uh, you know, so, I mean, any, any future gazing thoughts on that? Yeah, I think connected TV is an interesting one. It's, uh, it doesn't lie completely in TV, but it doesn't lie completely in digital either. It's attributable, it's part of, I mean, it can be part of the Google ecosystem if you want to measure it. Uh, and yet you're getting the audiovisual experience of a television. Possibly you're also getting shared, uh, like social watching with your entire family. So it's kind of the mix of both. Uh, the latest number I saw, it was I think 20 million households in India. Uh, that's already quite a large size. Uh, I remember when I started advertising, whether it was less than seven or eight million, and yet it used to be big enough to be part of my digital marketing mix. Um, I would still put it as part of the digital media mix, just because it's it can be measured along with Google and not really along with the TVRs. Uh, but yeah, you get all the benefits of the television advertising as well. So. I mean, it's kind of in the middle. I think over time, as 
the be the other benefit of uh, connected television is it's automatically reaching out to a premium audience or an audience that is more digitally enabled which is more uh, probably a slightly higher household income and therefore you're already self selecting the right kind of customers that's another big advantage of it as that volume increases i think it's going to be very interesting for both new age players like startups which are d2c startups and also maybe the incumbent ones the larger organizations today now how do we how do we process the idea of connected tvs right do we see it as having the best of both worlds you can do social watching uh, it does all that the tv does yet very sharp attributability and being able to buy it for example if you look at the new generation right for for the gen z right tv is not uh, you know colors and stars the tv is is netflix and and amazon prime and so on and so forth but the fact is that 20 million households that's it so you have a direct correlation to as pointed out to a premium audience but that's about it right and it's only 20 million households that's point number 1 point number 2 is when you talk about internet penetration it's about mobile devices it's not about household wifi so the growth of smart tv is going to take a considerable amount of time and till till such time and for some time more to come i think tv uh, is going to be still the mainstay medium and this is going to be a very niche medium which can be smartly used by certain products uh, and product categories but not for mass brands like uh, tata motors yes tomorrow if tesla was to come into the market certainly they can use it and they will use it they're not going to go on mass television grish your thoughts on that and also from your perspective if you've done ipl over the years have you also done hotstar and what's been your current tv uh, experience or impact on that No, so again, uh, coming back to connected TV, I think 5G will really uh, explode uh, the consumption of connected TV. It's likely to, but I completely agree with Rajan that it's just 20 million households. We have 150 million households still watching on a cathode ray tube. So that change is going to take years because the market is just about 10 million to 12 million every year of television sets, right? And of course, 80 percent is our smart television. So from that perspective, it's going to take years to happen. Of course, uh, the 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 other answer. you know hotstar versus uh, you know the, the live television there are very different ways to kind of look at it uh, if your idea and anybody's idea to be on ipl would be to create large awareness mass bombarding then television turns out to be cheaper than digital from an efficiency perspective i think tv will be cheaper uh, like i keep saying digital is more performance marketing digital is more micro surgical strikes uh, the idea of ipl is a little different for 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 me uh, from that perspective but yes connected tv is going to change the way india watches I would still put connected TV in the category of television because even on OTT you're watching the same content that you would watch on television, and even on mobile phones you would watch that. You know you would watch that. So I'm of a belief belief that television spends and OTT spends should be clubbed together and should be put under television spends and not counted as digital spends because they're doing the same job of creating awareness. Whereas digital is more surgical strikes, more uh, performance marketing, more ROI based, you know, um, uh, investments in that sense. Gaurav, how are you guys processing the idea of connected TV? I mean, how are you processing the idea of connected TV, right, as a as a broadcast player? So, see, connected TV. Uh, while it, like uh, uh, some of my fellow panelists said, that it looks very small as we speak, because not too many people into it. But with passage of time and improved uh, data speeds, it will catch up. Right now, it looks like it is in the sushi category. You know, good to have it sometimes, but can't have it as a daily meal. some day it will become part of your daily meal but what this has certainly done is it has taken content creators back to their drawing board because such content has reduced the attention span of viewers like even you as a creative uh, person today are making smaller creatives 7 seconds 10 seconds 12 seconds so that has a bearing on content creators so today for example on one of our channel zoom we have started reducing the size of the music videos we play now 45 seconds to 1 minute kind of videos rather than 3 minute videos our new stories have been cut short in size we now play headlines more than regular stories we play headlines 3 times an hour each headline is of 2 minutes to 3 minute where we put in 10 stories because the viewers attention span is reducing so that's the impact that it is having otherwise it's not really impacted any other way sure so i think that's that's what we have time for i just want to go around once uh, with the last comments on What is the one thing that we should keep in mind while using TV? So, Sambit, while using any media, it's the objective that you have. I mean, 
from the last answer i find it interesting that for a company 20 million can be large audience for another company it can be really small and i get that uh, so objective of course matters for whichever your brand or company is uh, and accordingly the usage for television whether to use it and if yes how to use it I think it's important to understand the buying behavior of your consumers and then link that back to the medium that you use. So as I mentioned earlier, TV is a social medium. So it works for high value categories, which are a family purchase. So from that context, understand uh, who your consumers are, obviously, but also understand uh, how the purchasing behavior happens as a unit or as a, as a family, and then make the decisions accordingly. So for example, an IPL, it works well when you are a category which is going to be bought once in five years, I feel. I mean, it really works well then because you make that big impact, people go and spend that big amount of money. It won't necessarily make the impact for daily usage, uh, uh, you know, kind of items. Or for example, what we learned in the IPL was that there are certain teams which are favorites. So we stuck to marketing, uh, I mean, advertising only on those, uh, only on those matches and not throughout the IPL. So I think these are some of the things that you need to pick up as you go along and use it wisely. Yeah, I would strongly believe that as a marketer, you should effectively leverage the opportunities available in each medium, television, digital, print, outdoor, every medium has some or the other advantage. So don't rule out anything, just focus on, you know, the media multiplier, try to kind of not dilute yourself to think, but uh, to thin, but focus on, uh, you know, what each channel or what each medium can bring to you. And, uh, you know, that's the secret to succeed. Yeah. So from my point of view, I would say that uh, if a marketer wants to tell uh, impactful stories and he wants to reach maximum people, if these two objectives form part of your you know, overall matrix, then TV should play an important role. While uh, people choose the co combination of TV and digital and social and all other options, it is a great thing to do. But TV will continue to lead that thought process. And if you have to become a thought leader in that, TV is going to really uh, come handy. Fantastic. I think it's been a great learning experience for me as well, right? I mean, the fact that it's a much more nuanced topic. It's not just TV or digital. How all the in mediums are interacting with each other, they have their own role, and depends a lot on what life cycle your brand and your business is. And the fact that TV in itself is changing a lot by itself in its form and content. So thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys, for listening to us uh, and holding back from lunch. Have a great day.